Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 6 for April the 7th, 2019. We're still in Unit 2 entitled Call to Ministry. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is entitled Summon for Service. Our devotional reading is taken from uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Our background scripture is also taken from uh, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 10 and we will be studying today from uh, Matthew's Gospel uh, chapter 10 verses 1 through 15. Our key verse reads, Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. It's taken from Matthew chapter 10 verse 1 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to compare and contrast the disciples' mission in Matthew chapter 10 with the mission of the church today. Secondly, to anticipate the challenges you will experience in making an attempt to fulfill Christ's mission for the church. And then thirdly, uh, to prepare yourself for greater participation in Christ's mission uh, for the church. We have three outlines today that uh, will be uh, part of our discussion. The first outline is entitled Called. Second outline is entitled Charged. <clears throat> and then the um, third outline is entitled Challenged. So we certainly thank and praise God today for yet another opportunity to uh, study God's Word with you. We hope that you will join us in um, uh, taking some notes and following us along in Scripture as we present this lesson today. Uh, one that uh, began last Sunday in our discussion from Matthew chapter 4. And uh, we were talking about... Uh, uh, Jesus calling uh, his disciples uh, into ministry and so we want to uh, review a few notes that we made last week in addition to uh, the biblical context for today's lesson which will help us understand uh, what we're dealing with in terms of uh, all of the calling or the uses of the word called or calling in scripture from the uh, Old Testament and even into the New Testament. So the biblical context is as follows. In today's text, we are about to uncover the commission of the mission of the twelve disciples. So after an explanatory statement and a listing of the twelve, Matthew gives Christ's charge uh, to them regarding their uh, first mission. So we can see uh, that there are various sections that uh, um, are marked out here uh, in Matthew's Gospel that will help us understand um, what Jesus is challenging his disciples to do. But I also want to make mention of uh, some points we made last week in our discussion uh, talking about uh, the type of calling in our text. And I want you to pay attention to that. Uh, because there is uh, some differences uh, in terms of what it what it means to be called. So a call or a calling, uh, we have to ask ourselves uh, uh, what type of calling is this and what does it represent uh, as we review this in uh, Matthew chapter 10. Uh, but also a calling is described in scripture uh, as an invitation, a summons, uh, commission or naming. Uh, so the Old Testament has some five main uses of, of the word calling. Uh, the New Testament also uh, uses the same expression of the uh, various types of calls, uh, but we want to make sure that we understand uh, the basic call. Uh, when we use that term, it is a call um, to Christ as Lord and Savior. This would be an individual that does not know Christ and the pardon of their sins. And that initial call would be uh, uh, to salvation. And so uh, all Christians are the called ones. 
uh, it is employed to uh, or in a comprehensive way to depict what has happened to those who through the father's love are now called children of God uh, we gave the first epistle of John chapter 3 verse 1 on last week and also uh, there are further callings uh, to special ministries and we also gave Acts chapter 13 uh, verse 2 so uh, today as we uh, get into Matthew's gospel um, we glean from this that this is not the initial uh, calling if you will unto discipleship this particular call in our text now uh, as our topic for uh, uh, this lesson is entitled summoned so now they are being summoned they are being called again they are being commissioned now uh, as we understand this passage of scripture uh, on their first journey uh, in Christian service so as we look at these different types of callings and I hope that you will understand what it means when you use the term that I've been called to ministry what are you conveying to uh, to someone when you use that term are you saying that you have been called to salvation are you saying that you've been summoned to do something so it would help us to understand uh, uh, what we are describing that has happened to us but we we get today uh, uh, in this lesson from Matthew chapter 10 that Jesus uh, is moved from the basic call of his disciples into what we would call a special call so I want to get into this first outline today taken from Matthew chapter 10 uh, verses uh, 1 through 4 and I want to read this from the NIV translation the Bible says Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and, and sickness. Verse 2, these are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, uh, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, and James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, uh, Simon the Zealot, and uh, Judas Iscariot, uh, who betrayed him. So now we have uh, some insight. These individuals Jesus called specifically for a specific purpose. Uh, that is very important, and we have these names uh, so we can understand that Jesus specifically wanted these individuals to be involved in this this mission or this this missionary journey if you will and then he he gave them something or he equipped them with something for what he had called them to do and that's very important as we observe these types of uses of the term call that that we have to uh, uh, be equipped to do the things that we say we are uh, have been called to do so these individuals have encountered uh, I don't know if you can see this in the text or not, but they have already been exposed to the things uh, during the ministry uh, when Jesus initially called them unto salvation. They traveled with him. They saw him do these things, these miracles, how he uh, uh, dealt with various sicknesses and diseases and even uh, demons and spirits and things like that. So they have been exposed to this type of spiritual work. And so now he can commission them uh, to, to get involved uh, in rendering service in these particular areas because they have been exposed to it. And, and it's important for us to understand as disciples of Christ, you will encounter various things in, in your life and in ministry. And you may not uh, uh, see them as a positive, but where would an individual go to get training and I'm using as an example here uh, if they are going to uh, be spiritual doctors if you will if they're going to uh, 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 drive out or cast out demons and impure spirits where would they go to school to learn these things how would they get the knowledge uh, uh, to to 
uh, that that they w that would be necessary for them to engage in this kind of Christian service. Uh, 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 who would in enlighten them as to what to do and not to do when they engage? Uh, uh, and I think it's huge when we see uh, something here in this, uh, the, the term here in the first verse that we read, they were to heal every disease. They would, they would also be exposing themselves uh, to sickness, to disease, to demons. They would encounter these things firsthand. So think of the power that they would need uh, to engage these individuals who are sick and who were demon possessed and they would be able to be effective in this type of Christian service and be able to stand their ground without being overtaken. That's the point I want to to lift with you today. So I want us to understand that uh, Jesus had called the men to come to him uh, prior to this moment. The original calling was interesting in that none of the men had prominent status so it was not about uh, uh, particularly who they were what they what their names were or any kind of uh, social background or experience but but Jesus called them from various walks of life and he equipped them uh, to be able to uh, conduct the type of Christian service that is needed uh, when we look at our culture today, and, and certainly in the culture in, uh, uh, in the early church, and, and even with Jesus' disciples, uh, we have to understand that 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 Jesus is equipping them for the times. Jesus is equipping them for the culture, for the environment in which they are to work in. And that's very important because culture has a tendency to change. Environments have a, a tendency to change. And we have to engage uh, in Christian service according to the culture and the times. And we need authority and we need power to be able to deal with that. And so Jesus himself, he called them and Jesus himself gave them the authority. No one else can do this uh, 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 but the Lord himself. And so these individuals are not born uh, uh, of any privilege uh, that might have been the main thing uh, uh, or, or was a requirement that Jesus called them uh, uh, in the first place. But uh, he gave them power to cast out demons and to heal disease and sickness so when uh, uh, Jesus calls his disciples uh, the first time they came to him on their own accord that there, there, there was a willingness to follow Jesus so uh, during this time uh, they were being instructed by Jesus and so they were his students they were his learners so the, these disciples are prepared now for the next level and this is what the uh, the commentary is sharing with us and I thought that was huge to to underscore the fact that we have to be prepared to engage the culture that that we are living in it doesn't matter what your particular uh, gift may be it doesn't matter what your particular ministry might be but we have to be prepared to deal with the spiritual components of our culture this is not physical uh, 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 all physical, I should say, but uh, diseases are, are 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 physical. They have physical manifestation and also sickness. But 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 the first thing that Jesus highlights here in Matthew chapter ten is dealing with spirits, dealing with conditions, dealing with impure uh, spirits, dealing with demons. Uh, and it's very important that we have the type of spiritual equipment. Uh, to stand our ground as we engage these type of unclean uh, spirits because we can be overtaken. We see that in Acts chapter 19. But uh, these individuals, uh, he ordains them, he empowers them, giving them uh, the power to work in his will. Specifically, the power was to be waged against the enemy unclean spirits when we go out to do good deeds we go out to do Christian service when we see the opposition and it might be uh, Joe or Sue and I'm just using these names as as an example they could be anyone but what is infusing Joe and Sue where are these 
uh, uh, these individuals taking their instructions from. And these are the types of spiritual battles that we have to engage in and we have to discern and we have to be able to stand our ground because this is the environment that we have to work in. So uh, uh, it's very important that we uh, don't minimize the fact that uh, these individuals that we have called by name in uh, Matthew chapter 10 verses 1 through 4 they have gone through a rigorous process with Jesus Christ himself in order to be prepared for the next level so there are some things that you and I must go through that we must experience that we must even suffer uh, the Spirit of the Lord was reminding me about something uh, uh, that uh, uh, Jesus said to uh, Saul on the Damascus Road, uh, I believe in Acts chapter 9, uh, that he would, uh, as Jesus said to Ananias, I, I'm going to show Saul all that he must suffer for my name's sake. Uh, and so we have to go through some things sometimes, and we don't like suffering, but it, it is a prerequisite for the next level. God will allow you to be exposed to things that you might learn about those things in order that he might use you uh, in ministry. So we don't want to minimize those things, uh, but, but literally uh, these individuals had to embrace the fact that they were uh, uh, going into uh, not just uh, uh, unfamiliar territory but they had the training and the expertise uh, by being with Jesus himself as to how they were to deal with these different conditions that were plaguing the lives of God's people so I want to keep this in mind I wish we really had a, a, a lot more time to deal with what it means to be called uh, because it, it can be and I shared this even last week it can be confusing for a lot of individuals who believe that when they have heard that initial call that they somehow interpret the basic call unto salvation as being commissioned uh, at that time. Commission may come at a later time but we have to know what we are talking about. We have to have experience in salvation so we we are clear in our messaging uh, to the hearers. There's so much that goes with uh, uh, what it what it means to be called so again before we move on we are dealing with uh, in, with these individuals they have endured an invitation from Christ as a particular use of calling and they are now dealing with a summons or a commission uh, uh, of their call as well so there's a couple of things going on so I hope you keep those things in mind the question is asking the quarterly, what ministry is God calling you into as his disciple? Do you feel prepared for where you are about to be sent? Two very powerful questions that I certainly cannot answer for you and you cannot answer for me. But it makes good sense for us to talk to God about every move, every step that that we want to make and that we are about to make and that someone it may even be asking us to get involved in a particular ministry that you're not qualified to 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 engage in uh, and so uh, it's, it's very uh, wise uh, for you and I to make sure that we understand where we are in ministry uh, that we can handle being commissioned that we can handle uh, engaging on a level uh, I was talking to uh, a friend of mine just yesterday and uh, one particular floor where we uh, do ministry he said uh, Reverend that we're going up on another level to deal with another level of individuals who are incarcerated and so uh, uh, what he was trying to determine was do we have anyone uh, that that is ready for that level so I cannot just say to him well yeah let me send someone who is inexperienced to handle that level so every aspect of ministry uh, uh, is a different level and could uh, 
uh, um, present to us uh, greater challenges than we are capable of dealing with that we've ever dealt with in our lives. So I think the, the, the question in the quarterly here is relevant. Are you prepared? Do you feel prepared? And then if you're not prepared, what do you do about that? If you're not prepared uh, to go into or to go to the next level, how should you handle that? Would it be, uh, uh, would, it, would, it, would it have been a good idea for me to lie and say, okay, well, yeah, I do know somebody that can uh, uh, function on that level and not really be sure. So we have to make sure, and I would not personally uh, engage in sending someone that uh, uh, to another level that I haven't prayed about, talked to, and, and, and uh, sort of vetted them, if you will, to see if they were able to handle the next level. And this is the kind of process that God takes us through uh, because we do fail tests sometimes. And God will uh, see you through that failure only to give you that test again. Uh, because we have to pass these tests. We have to pass these, uh, 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 these things that God sets before us. Because God wants to know if we're credible. If we can be trusted. If we're going to stick with it. Uh, you can imagine that these disciples facing uh, 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 spirits. Uh, how many spirits uh, will they face over the course of ministry? How many diseases will they be exposed to over the course of ministry? How much sickness? Uh, how, how much of this are they going to be able to endure? So that's what that anointing and that authority covers you for the duration of the time that you, you must serve. I hope that makes sense for you today. So know yourself. Know what God has called you to do and stay within the bounds of your call. Uh, I've had to say no over the years to uh, many, many people and many, many churches that wanted to pull me in different areas. I didn't, uh, uh, I wasn't ready for certain things and the Lord did not certainly tell me to do all of these various things, so I had to say no. Uh, I could not engage. So don't be afraid to use the word no until you consult with your Lord and Savior and let the Lord uh, via the Holy Spirit direct you in the way that you are to go uh, and what you should do. So that's very important. Our second outline is entitled uh, Charge. This is taken from Matthew chapter 10 uh, verses 5 through 10. And again I want to read this from the um, NIV translation these 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions do not go among the Gentiles or enter the or enter any town of the Samaritans go rather to the lost sheep of Israel as you go proclaim this message the kingdom of heaven uh, has come near heal the sick raise the dead cleanse those who have leprosy drive out demons freely you have received freely give verse 9 do not get any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts no bag for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or staff for the worker is worth his keep now as we deal with the call um, and this is relevant to uh, uh, in Jesus day as well as our day we have to have instructions uh, I, I like these verses here that give us step-by-step -step, uh, uh, accounting of what Jesus expects them to go to do it's geographical uh, it has everything practical and spiritual it has a message uh, uh, it has everything that the disciples uh, will need uh, for direction for ministry and that's very important we need instruction uh, if God sent you to do something and but you don't know what it is and you don't know how to do it then why would God send you to do that that doesn't make sense but these 12 
the Bible says uh, from the NIV they were sent out with the following instructions. So this is where we have to take note uh, uh, in our spirits and certainly physical notes as to what God wants us to do. So they were not to go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Uh, go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. Why is God, why is Jesus saying that to them? Why can't I go where I want to go? Why can't I say what I want to say uh, to whoever I want to say that to? Well, that's not how ministry works. And we get that here. Uh, Matthew should be noted that uh, Matthew's gospel is directed. It is a Jewish gospel. Uh, and so when Christ came, uh, the promise was to Israel. Uh, and so they were offered uh, uh, salvation. Salvation was presented to the Jew first, uh, to Israel first. They subsequently rejected the message and then the door opened for Gentiles or other nations outside of the nation of Israel to hear the gospel message. You can see that in Romans chapter 11 uh, in its entirety. But, but uh, God did not certainly and Jesus did not uh, specifically say that he dot he did not want them to say anything uh, 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 to these individuals uh, any time or, or or ever but it wasn't the time to speak to the Gentiles it wasn't the time to do all of these other things ministry and we don't talk about this a lot uh, even in church today there's a there's a time mechanism to the things that we do uh, and so if we if we do things uh, uh, without pre uh, preparation, if we do things without uh, God's intervention into those things, we miss the timing of ministry and salvation for others. So we have to be careful with that. But they have in, in, in verse 7, uh, Jesus tells them, as you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near you. Well, that doesn't sound like a lot. But it's following instruction. Uh, uh, it doesn't sound like I get to speak for 20, 30, 45 minutes or even an hour. But it's what the Lord wants. And so we should always engage God with what he wants us to say. How he wants us to say it. Uh, uh, that's something that I've, I've practiced for years. Uh, it doesn't matter how much I study, how much scripture I memorize and all those types of things. I am always engaging God on how do you want me to present your word to your people. I ask that question. I engage God that way because uh, truth be told, I don't know how I should present it. I don't know how to engage. I don't know who would potentially be the hearers of God's word. So I need his help in every juncture, every aspect of ministry so I don't cause someone to stumble, so I don't uh, uh, displease God in my effort to do a good deed. So this is uh, uh, very practical for us today. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, freely you have receive freely give so what is Jesus saying here I want you to serve in a way and I don't want you to 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 base it on who gives you what I don't want you to charge for it I don't want you to take advantage of individuals because you have some power and some authority I don't want you to sell this gift I don't want you to make profit off of this in that in that way this is powerful so these 12 are called and sent out with a command or charge regarding where they are to go with the power they have received. We are not our own. We've been bought with a price. We have nothing apart from what God gives us. So he gets to say where we go and, 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 and how we use these things, uh, uh, these gifts that he gave us and the messaging. We need to include God that way. So I thought that was huge that the lesson... Uh, uh, brought that out but the Gentiles of course are non-Jews uh, the Samaritans while having partial uh, Jewish lineage are mixed in their religion um, and relationship with God so after the resurrection the disciples were appointed to go into uh, the world 
and teach all nations. We get that in the uh, Great Commission. So again, we could go on, but I hope that you will study uh, all of these different aspects of why Jesus uh, is giving them such boundaries in which to work in. Uh, we need that in ministry today. We don't need to uh, uh, compete with other churches and with other disciples. We, we should, uh, uh, if we let the Lord guide us, uh, he will establish boundaries for us. He will help us uh, do things in a way that we can work together in concert with other churches and with other ministries. Uh, what is our goal? Is it not the same? To see more people give their lives to Christ. So all of these different things. And then God somehow blesses us uh, in our efforts to do the things that he has given us to do. So we don't have to try to profit from it. Uh, in terms of making our own provision uh, by using our gifts to 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 make money for ourselves uh, but we should allow God to bless us and there have been times over the years and I, I preached uh, so many different places around this city uh, that I didn't have any money in my pocket but God blessed me uh, through uh, others who would just approach me and say let me give you this let me bless you with this so uh, I wasn't expecting it like that but God somehow provided so if we let him if he's sending you out to do something he will provide if he has commissioned you to go uh, globally and to to do ministry uh, uh, in some other part of the world God will provide if he called you to do something he will provide as as sure as it is that he have given these individual these 12 uh, power over all of these unclean spirits he have given them authority why can't he bless us and why can't he sustain us with the things that we would need to function in ministry it just seems to go together so I want to keep those things in mind but I want to give you Acts chapter 1 uh, verses 6 through 8 and also I want you to look at Matthew chapter 19 uh, verse 28 and I I started looking at as I read this uh, uh, second outline I started really looking into uh, the letters that the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy because a lot of this information Paul used it uh, as, he, as he came to the end of his life uh, in ministry and Christian service that he uh, uh, authorized and approved this young man Timothy uh, drafted him if you will into taking over his ministry and his his pastoral duties and and then Timothy's job was to uh, to recruit others if you will but there are some things that uh, uh, that are similar that Paul said to Timothy that Jesus is saying to um, his 12 here but I want you to look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verses 18 through 20 uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 21 um, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4 verses 1 through 5 and then I'm also going to give you Acts chapter 10 um, verses 42 and 43 but the question in the quarterly is God has charged each of us to carry out his mission share some do's and don'ts as we step out into ministry so these are some things that uh, uh, that I was looking at as I was uh, reading this lesson here uh, we really need to be able to exhibit the uh, uh, the quality of following instructions doing the things that God has called us to do and and it, it ministry is tough ministry is hard ministry uh, challenges us uh, in every aspect of our lives we make huge sacrifices uh, and, I, and I certainly thank and praise God for those of you who do uh, make the sacrifices day in day out but I want to encourage you today if God has charged you to do something uh, uh, and I guess when we get to the end of this we will certainly pray that God will sustain you and strengthen you and keep you as you uh, engage in ministry because it is work it is work uh, uh, for our families and all the sacrifices that uh, we make to to do the things that God have uh, uh, called us to do but uh, just remember it it does not go unnoticed and so uh, here 
in the uh, last outline is entitled Challenge. This is taken from Matthew chapter 10 uh, verses 11 through 15 and again from um, the NIV translation verse 11 whatever town or village you enter search there for some worthy uh, person and stay at their house until you leave as you enter the home give it your greeting if the home is deserving let your peace rest on it if not let your peace return to you verse 14 if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet truly I tell you it would be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah on that on the day of judgment than for that town so again more instructions uh, are being given to uh, uh, Jesus disciples here uh, and whatever town or village um, they were to enter can you imagine uh, he's already told them don't take any money uh, with them um, any gold or anything like that nor no no extra bag shirt sandals or staff God is saying to them for the worker is worth his keep so God is saying over here in verse 11 I'm going to provide I can see that in the text if, if Jesus is telling them don't take anything with you uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead of you and I'm going to prepare the hearts and minds of people that you're going to engage and I'm going to uh, 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 just like I equipped you to have power I'm going to uh, uh, provide for you a place to stay uh, you don't know specifically where that might be you don't may not know the individual that uh, 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 who owns the house and uh, but you will stay there so God is uh, going ahead of them and providing uh, for them so it doesn't say they're gonna have uh, uh, particularly any issues he says as you enter the home how does he know they're going to enter the home he has prepared all of these things give it your greeting he knows they're going to get in into these various places and have room and have board and have uh, uh, meals and all these kinds of things he is providing for them this is a this is not a, a half plan if you will this is the whole thing God is saying I'm giving you power you have a message you have a place to go you have a place to stay this is how I want you to conduct yourself when you get inside of these homes if these individuals are deserving in other words if they are receptive to the message then you greet them and you be at peace with them if not you don't lose anything your peace will return to you and when you get out of that city then you are that town you shake the dust off your feet we're going to talk about what that means in just a bit but but uh, they have everything that they need to be effective in ministry God has a way of opening doors for us uh, that we had no idea that he would open he has a way of doing things uh, in a way that that sort of catch us uh, uh, off guard because we was not uh, expecting uh, God to do it the way that he did it but he opened a door for us so uh, we all have experiences in, in in areas of our lives where God just showed up in just a nick of time and he provided for us in ways that uh, we didn't think that he would but he said he would he said he would supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory uh, and so he said he would never leave us and he would never forsake all of these things we have in scripture to encourage us that we are never alone even in the great commission uh, 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 in the gospel uh, uh, Jesus tells his 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 disciples that uh, uh, I, lo I will be with you I will be with you even to the end of the age he has never left us he never will leave us he has always provided for us he will always continue to provide for us he has always kept us this is how God can say to us that he's faithful because he's never forgotten to do his part 
to do his job, to be God. We are just to be his people, but he is God. So everything that he is telling these disciples to do, it's promising for them to uh, be effective in ministry. So he, he understands, he knows the places where we go that we may be accepted. He knows the places that we may go that we will not be accepted. And so he accounts for everything here. Every detail has been covered uh, in this commission. And this is what we have to have in ministry today. Uh, because sometimes things don't work out the way that we thought that they would or even should. But somehow God allows us to continue to keep going, to keep functioning, even when we don't and can't see our way out of it, God still provides. So we see that in the lesson today. So we have to believe that he will open doors. I, I underlined this in our lesson. Uh, it said you have to believe he will open doors and pave the way for you to do what he sent you to do. Keep in mind, if we are commissioned by God and he tells us to do something and we fail to do that, what does that say about the one who sent us? Is there any failure in God? Is there any lying in God? Is there any sin in God? Uh, may it may never be. So God is going to send us to be effective in ministry for his praise for his glory for his honor that men might be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth so this is purposeful here so here uh, when we get to the uh, last verse here verse 15 um, well actually verse 14 to shake the dust uh, uh, off of their feet when they left this town so whether it was a home or a town they were to shake the dust from their feet as a testimony against those inhabitants so this was something that the Jews practiced uh, when they entered Gentile places uh, places they didn't feel like were worthy of them uh, and so leaving they would shake the dust from their feet so this is uh, a sort of a um, an echo if you will of of what they are told to do by Christ in terms of of uh, of leaving this uh, city or these towns but the cities were caught up in sin but had not directly rejected an invitation to repent and partake uh, of the kingdom of God so we cannot make people uh, accept what we're offering. We have to sow seeds. We, we understand very well that Jesus, even from uh, a prophetic standpoint, he was despised, just like the scripture says in Matthew 53. He was rejected. And so we're going to experience that in ministry. Uh, everyone will not accept uh, what we're saying. And and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior but we have to present the message uh, that's the justice of God that's the equity of God that uh, everyone gets to hear the message everyone gets to hear the gospel uh, salvation is presented to every every man uh, Jesus died for everyone he didn't die for a certain group uh, he died for all and so uh, as we look at this lesson it was specific in instruction because Jesus knew when the time to open the ministry up or the message up for the Gentiles. But it was first to pre uh, be presented uh, to Israel, to the Jew first. So we hope, trust, and pray that we have given you something to think about and certainly that you will uh, uh, search um, deeply into what it means uh, for you to be called understand that very well and seek counsel uh, from your pastor from elders those who understand the call who can help you and and uh, 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 guide us in the way that we would do the things that God have called us to do so again let me pray for you uh, and certainly for myself that uh, God will 
um, uh, help us to to follow instructions and do the things that he have called us to do eternal God we thank you for this lesson we thank you for understanding what it means to be called you have invited us to partake of the great supper you have invited us to partake of your only begotten son you have provided a gift a way of escape that uh, we can accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and Father we also understand that as we have presented ourselves and have accepted the invitation unto salvation we understand that there is a time set for you to commission us and to send us out that we might share our faith that we might share our experiences and even a testimony to help others understand that this is a process by which all of us who have, say we are saved that we must undergo this process we must undergo the process at the hand of the Almighty God. And we just pray, Father, that we would take these examples, if we've learned them today, and let them be a blessing for our, our going forward to help shape our ministry and our outlook on, on ministry and our lives as a whole. We pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and everything that you have called them to do. Father, we rebuke the enemy right now that would come and set his purposes against your purposes and cause these your people to stumble and to fall and to cause them to be discouraged and to turn back. We pray that you would give them uh, the power and the strength to stay the course and do the things that you have called them to do. We know it's not easy, but you have told us to be of good cheer for you have overcome the world and we call it done in Jesus name. So until such time that the law will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.